pulls the three. Giannis, he's just loving it. The Bucks win this one easy, 112 to 95. So the pair of multi-time MVPs, they squared off last night. And then ESPN's Tim Bontemps had his latest straw poll today. Remember, this is where Bontemps asks 100 voters who their MVP is right now, which mimics the actual voting that will be conducted in April. Nikola Jokic was the major MVP favorite, but look who's behind him. Shea Gilgis Alexander second. Giannis third. You can see how the top five shakes out here. So Jokic, SGA, Giannis, they round up the top three. Brian, do you see this as reflective of how the MVP race is going to shake out? I do. I had Jokic number one on my straw ballot, and I had Shea number two. And what Bontemps has a bunch of data now. He's been doing this yep. for years. And over the last couple of years, the guy who was in second place in this midseason poll, this all-star poll, is the guy who ended up winning it. So even though Jokic has the lead and he has our respect from being a champion and MVP uh, finals MVP, if Shea Gilgis-Alexander were able to lead the Thunder to the Western Conference number one seed and is impressive in doing so, and I don't see how they would win it unless he's not, I do think there's a pathway for him. But look, Jokic is trying to win his third and fourth years, and it's when you're holding the finals MVP and the, and the NBA MVP at the same time, it's pretty impressive, and he's on his way there. Does that logic not apply to Jason Tatum? I'm a little curious, you know, because... The Celtics could easily end up with the best record in the NBA. And we're talking about people's impact. And I know his numbers may not look, they may not jump off of the table, I think around 25 or 26 points per game. He's still shooting the ball well. But I'm just surprised he didn't get one vote in the yeah. straw pool. Now, I understand, like, if I'm voting today for MVP, it's Nikola Jokic, based off of his impact to the game. SGA, best story, and I think he has a great shot at two, I'm cool. But I was more so like, oh, no Tatum. Well, but I'll that's what's why. interesting. Oh, I'll go, go ahead, Brian. And it's not fair because it's supposed to be on this year's – it's not supposed to be last year or next year or four years ago or whatever. Jason Tatum in the playoffs the last couple of years, particularly in the finals two years ago, didn't play his best. And so now, fair or not, no matter what you want to say, the bar for him is a little bit higher. So would that apply for Donovan Mitchell it as well? absolutely applies to Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell was in my top five, but he who, was in the top five with the straw Who board. was in your top five, Brian? I had uh, – Jokic and then um, and Shea and then I had Kawhi third I had Donovan fourth and I had Luka fifth so no Giannis so that that's what's where it's going to get really tough for voters this year like and, and you well, know you do this vote right now when they're going through a coaching change and let me say that will affect voters that will affect voters and we've seen it in 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 the past if a coach gets fired if things start to change over they oftentimes look at the stars and those stars are the ones that are going to be voted on for MVP but let me be very clear when we talk about a pathway I think there's a pathway for three people, Shea, Kawhi, and Donovan Mitchell. I think those three, if Shea finishes number one, keeps putting up stats, keeps doing a great job like he has. Or even just top two. Again, and then if you look at Kawhi, uh, Kawhi Leonard, if his team continues this trajectory that they've been on for the last six, seven weeks, same thing. Donovan Mitchell, same way. They're number two right now. Out of nowhere. I'm stunned Kawhi's not in the top five. That I mean, he was firmly in third, in my view. And so... You're, you know, I'm surprised that he's not there at all. That's one of the big surprises for me because he's played so great. Well, the only thing I would say is this. It is so difficult and why I think this is the era of big men. Big men get to put up gaudy, gaudy stats. Like, you're not – like, Jokic is almost averaging a triple But that's because the skill sets have evolved. Uh, 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 Agreed. So, when you're looking at a guard, right, when James Harden won it, when um, Russell Westbrook won it, their numbers were – off the yeah, charts big. Averaging a triple-double. Exactly. So now you're sport. talking about Giannis, Jokic, and Embiid. What those guys are able to do from a statistical number, especially with less defense, let's say elevated numbers, those things jump off the chart. Jason Tatum, Kawhi Leonard, Shea, Donovan Mitchell, those guys are not going to put up those gaudy numbers of a James Harden, of a Russell Westbrook. And they're definitely not going to put up the same oh, Or the that, centers that the also centers. get the rebounds. So, yeah. so they've got to be number one. If Jokic is stuck there at number four and Shea and these guys get to number one, one, if Kawhi gets to number one, then that helps their argument. If Jokic's numbers are, are, are if his numbers are crazy and his team is at four or five, then that kind of drops him, in my opinion. I also think that what helps your argument is expectation of winning. And yeah. that's where I think Kawhi could potentially edge Shea. I know that looking at the records, okay, OKC is up there. But if this is the year, which we all believe it could be, where the Clippers finally get to the Western Conference Finals and advance yeah. and win a championship, that narrative helps Kawhi. And he's having his best right. shooting season of his career. But that goes back to what Brian was saying about how maybe the year before, if that's something that happens this year, then that affects how he's viewed next year versus that expectation because we vote on this in the regular show. So we got to talk about Victor Wembanyama. I mean, Ooh. he is starting to really separate himself in the rookie of the year race. And guys, last night, 
it may have been the most impressive game of his young career because I'm finding myself watching a blowout between <laughs> Victor Wimanyama, who shows up rocking this. Do you have an outfit like that? I, I do not have an outfit. Too many like buttons that. for him a dunk like that. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, I could up. do a dunk like that, but but I would have to jump a lot higher. <laughs> a lot higher. Well, we're gonna. He already had 19.6 rebounds, five assists, three blocks, two steals in the first half. So we're just gonna go ahead to the nope. second half. Here. It's the blocks for me, y'all. I mean, to be able to put up double digit blocks and this is your rookie campaign yep. you're playing for a team that is uh, nope. playing for different reasons like he shows up to every matchup with the right intensity and defense is the best manifestation of that no nope. Brian's having like e40 <laughs> over here nope 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 I, nope. Have, hey, I nope. have some I have some hater thoughts Ooh, oh give okay. it to us give we're it gonna to save us. Nope. those later we're gonna save those <laughs> nope. for later we have some hate I have some hater thoughts what a tease yes we'll save it for later though Victor I mean the weight watching him just hunting those blocks the way that he, the vision that he has on the floor here today. Look, Look at that. You're, you're hating from outside the club because you could never. <laughs> Ever. Get in. Ever. Oh I'm just glad they're gosh. winning. I'm glad they're winning and he put up great numbers. Under seven in the fourth. Are they? Grady Dick. What, what are you doing, Grady Dick? This is number 10 for him. Wemby's 10th block, which gives him a triple double. Yep. Kevin Vassell <laughs> misses it. Nope. Yep. Wembenyama, 27 <laughs> points, 10 blocks, 14 rebounds, pass. five assists, two steals. Goodness. He was looking back. He was like, oh, that was a great pass. And he's making history. I mean, Wemby is the first rookie with a 10 block triple double since David Robinson in 1990. The Admiral did it Ooh. three times as a Ooh. rookie that season because I he mean, was of 27 he years old. <laughs> so let's, let's keep well, that. It wasn't just rookie history, though, for Vic, right? He's the fifth player in NBA history with a game of 25 points, 10 rebounds. Rebounds, 10 blocks, five assists. The other four, Hakeem, Kareem, Robinson, and Ralph Sampson. And then Wemby, I mean, he's consistent as well, right? He's putting up numbers for the season. We just haven't seen by any player since Shaq in 2000. And that was the season that O'Neal won the league MVP. And Victor is putting up those numbers as a freaking rookie. So I think it's easy to ignore the fact that this kid, he's 20, he's 20 years old. He's already putting up numbers at a historic level. I'm going to let you get to your hater thoughts, but just keep them for I one more second. Because he's already exceeded expectations. I want to go love before hate. I got so much hate. <laughs> he has not exceeded my expectations because this is what I expected him to do. Wow. Because I thought he would be an impact player right away. He's averaging 20 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks a game in 29 minutes. 29 minutes because he's been on a minute restriction. And last night, by the way, he did all that in 29 minutes. Okay, here's the other thing. The thing that you're probably going to say is that he ha he's, he's trouble, has trouble shooting. I wasn't going to say nothing like that. Well, in the last 13 <laughs> games, he's shooting 39% on threes. The three-point shot is getting better. And he does turn the ball over. Now, that is a legitimate problem. they got to do something about that. He's got to get better there. But he is only scratching the surface of what he can be. He would be the first guy to say, though, that he needs to get better there. He was already talking about that. Okay, Richard. No, 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 no. This is the thing. I want to be clear. I don't want to tarnish anything that that young you man is doing. just said I have I, so much I, hate. I, no, no, no. I, not so much hate. I just have a hate statement that I, <laughs> but I'm going to say. I'm so gonna that's say, hate, Richard, hate. Just say it. I, I have a hate statement. statement. I'm going to save it because, no, 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 because I don't say want it, it to take away from what he's oh, doing no, no, currently no, 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 right no. now. No, you no, already no, 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 dug no, yourself no, into no, this No, you dug yourself this hole. Come on, man. Just share what you're Absolutely not. After she has to look at all those historical stats. It has to you knew you were Safe space. Richard's safe space. Yeah, it's a secret. We won't tell anybody has to do with some of the criticism that our guy Wilt Chamberlain got. That's it. That's it. Hey, but we'll, I'll save it for that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's Wait, who is criticizing Wilt? Was that I just I mean, I don't, save it. I've okay. just guys trust me guys. I am Th that I, I is absolutely Victor, not I'm definitely not trusting you, this is you what on I that. will say. Victor has surpassed in my opinion Chet Holmgren from the way he has played. I've been Chet all year long. He has surpassed Chet, but I still think is neck and neck. I still think that the pressure that Chet Holmgren is under to provide a high level lift for the team that he's on. That's what uh -uh. I'm saying. You're the uh -uh. biggest uh -uh. tease. Come on. Yes, I am. I've been yeah. called that many a night. Oh <laughs> gosh. Here we go. Let me get us back on track, okay? <laughs> I've ne I've always had Victor Where's as if I go down? you know the guy to win Rookie of the Year just because I see his impact. Richard, I feel like you're faulting Victor because he's in a bad situation versus benefiting, you know, Chet because he's in a good one. He's in a bad situation. He can't control that he's not playing with people that you know Chet is playing with. But what has he done with the opportunity he has? He's put up numbers, points, rebounds. That's you know all blocks. Like he's he's been the class of all of that. Uh, no, really quickly, I 100% agree with you. Which but you give the edge to Chet, right? Yeah, yes, but does Chet have 
have more pressure on him. Like, understand, we're not. No, the doesn't fr- doesn't Victor Webinyama? No, 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 no. You called Victor no, 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 wait, 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 Okay, can I finish what I'm saying? Can I finish Absolutely. what I'm saying? Can I finish what I'm saying really quickly? If you want to just No, no, really quickly. No, too. I'll say it in a second. This is what I want to say. In a second? When we talk about pressure, Point. when we talk about pressure, right? Yes, there is looming pressure because I said he was the greatest prospect, and I still stand by that. But we're talking about in-game. It's not about being a prospect. In-game, when you've got to make shots late game, only thing I'm saying, we're not going to fault. If you don't want to fault Victor for being on a crappy team, there is still pressure applied as a rookie, as you know, when you show up and your team is the number one seed and you are having to play in these high level games every single night that is a different type of pressure than just expectation yeah but that doesn't diminish what victor webbing has been able to do in the small I'm amount not of time that all right I mean, it's been one you second did start the segment with hate what's your hate okay. meant